Hello students, welcome back. After a long spell of holidays, I hope you are freshened up and geared up to uh, attend this class. So today's topic, basically, we have taken from a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. Okay, and this book is written by Sean Covey. Okay, and uh, basically, this book is based on the, the another book of uh, Stephen Covey, who is the father of Sean Covey, The Seven uh, Habits of Highly Effective People. Okay, so this particular book, Sean Covey, he has taken from, uh, 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 from that particular book in which he has used the 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 content of that book in order to suit teenagers or youngsters okay so today's class basically is based on this book the seven habits of highly effective teens written by sean covey and i would encourage you if you have the time please do buy this book it's available on kindle it's available on amazon so it will really be a helpful book for you okay so stephen covey who is the father of uh, sean covey on which this book is based on the famous book written by Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So he had embarked on his quest to understand the nature of success. I believe every one of us want to be successful. Okay, so he began himself by immersing himself in some 200 years worth of literature on this topic of success starting from 1776. Okay, and based on his research, he found out that basically there are two methods that uh, you know you can achieve success. Okay, so the first method is you know for you to work on the skills necessary for the behavior. That means basically this first method focuses on the skill, how to communicate, how to let us say present yourself, okay, or how to be good in your vocabulary, in your uh, let's say grammar. In basically it focuses on what we call as on the external part, on the external. Okay, so for instance, if you want to improve your relationship, therefore with others, you might study communication or body language techniques. Okay, so he called, uh, or we call basically this method as the personality ethic method. Okay, the personality ethic method. All right, okay, so that is the first method. But Stephen Covey goes on to say that there is another second method. And what is the second method? And he says that the second method is far more effective. It is far more effective than the first method. And why? Because it works on your character. It works on your character. That is why it is also called as the character ethic method. And what does this method talk about? It focuses on you no know, working on your character, that is, the fundamental habits and belief systems that form your view of the world. Okay, so according to Stephen Covey, real success can come when there is a change in character. Okay, when we focus on the character. Okay, so this kind of a change, as you can see here, it is a kind of a change which, which works from the inside out. The first method basically is from the outside. Outside, you change on the outside, you know, and then the change can come on the inside. But basically, this second method focuses on, you know, change from the inside out. Okay, so therefore, this is important. Why? Because especially sometimes we change not for, sometimes changes that comes in us, it doesn't come from inside. You know, like there was a boy who wanted to change, uh, you know, was into drinking and all, and so he got a girlfriend and he said, okay, for your sake, I'm going to change. But then after some time, his girlfriend ditched him. And again, he went back into drinking. Okay, that is a kind of, I'm just giving you an example. That is a kind of an external kind of a change. You change, the environment changes you. But when changes come from the inside out, that will produce the lasting change in you. And that can really bring success, through success in your life. Okay, so therefore, uh, Stephen Covey, he says in, in this particular Sean Covey, you know, in this particular book on the seven habits of highly effective teens, he says like this. Okay, so if 
character is a very important so if changing your character is very important in order to achieve success in your life so the question is so how can you work on this character how can you work on your character okay one one particular aspect is this if you have ever tried to navigate the streets of a foreign city you know that a map is useful for instance now if you go to an unknown city you have google map and through google map you can navigate yourself you can find out your destination where you want to go okay but what happens is but when you navigate the world around you instead of a map with streets and addresses you use what you call as paradigms but in your life if you want to reach your goals if you want to reach your direction if you want let us say to move in the right direction you need what we call is what we call as a paradigm okay so what is a paradigm a paradigm is the subjective way of each of us in which we perceive and try to understand the world it's like what i would call as a prism okay as a prism or as a uh, as a as a mirror in which you would look at the world okay so the thing is what type of or which paradigm should you strive for okay so seven habits you know this uh, attaining this kind of a principle based paradigm okay is what the seven habits are all about why because the most effective you know uh, paradigm which you can you you can you can achieve in your life is you know which are aligned with larger universal principles okay like based on certain principles like honesty like integrity like fairness okay so those are the kind of principles and when your paradigms are aligned you no know, when your when your uh, when when that particular paradigm okay or let us say the way you look at life is aligned to certain basic principles basic universal principles okay then it will help you to achieve the kind of true success that you need in your life okay so attain attaining this kind of a principle based paradigm is exactly what the seven habits are all about okay so applying these seven habits in which it will change the way the perspective you, in which you look at life that will basically help you in order to achieve the that success which you you require in your life okay so therefore let's directly go into this topic now the seven habits okay and so let's see what is the first habit that shon kovi ta talks about so the first habit that he says that he, you can achieve success in your life is you know be proactive be proactive okay now as you can see here what distinguishes humans from animals okay humans or uh, uh, sorry animals they are reactive okay a snake if it sees uh, another uh, person uh, if it sees a person a human being naturally it will be in crime it will react it will like bites that person okay so why because they are reactive animals are reactive okay but on the other hand humans if you see in contrast we can reflect on a stimulus okay that means before i respond as a human being before i respond i can reflect i can decide i can choose what kind of response i would basically be making all right that's the major difference between human beings and animals human beings uh, you know they can reflect on the kind of response but animals they cannot why because they are reactive okay so the first habit says you need to be proactive in the sense why because when you reflect on the kind of response you know that you will be making that will basically help you to make the right respond in a particular situation or in your particular uh, encounter that you are basically experiencing okay and why proactiveness is very important why because proactive people they focus on their circles of influence it's like you have two circles this is the external environment you know you have two circles okay two circles all right this is uh, for instance uh, you so you have two circles here one is uh, uh, so this circle is on 
the outer circle is the environment and this inner circle is you know you basically all right so proactive people what they do is you know they basically focus on what they can do okay which means they don't allow you know they don't allow the environment to influence them but rather they determine what kind of response they would make whenever the environment you know places uh, uh, when, whenever the environment tries to impact them okay so here if you can see you know uh, so proactive people they focus on the circles of influence choosing to work on the things with, within the, within their control okay for instance you have a very a friend who is a very hot uh, tempered person he comes to you you cannot change him but you can certainly change the way you would respond to him or the way you would respond to her okay why because you cannot change people so this proactiveness you know uh, you know is is very much required it's a very uh, important habit why because it would help you to concentrate on on, on uh, it would help you to concentrate and not allowing the environment to influence you but rather you influencing the environment that is why if you are a proactive person if you are a proactive person you know you will be able to influence you will be able to create a circle of influence all right okay why so meanwhile if you see reactive people what happens with the active people they focus on their circles of concern okay they are concerned about their career they are concerned about their exams they are concerned okay about so many things but in the end they're so much concerned that they end up you know doing nothing not working or trying to find a solution to it okay and therefore if if you see so this results in the circle of influence shrinking okay so if you allow the environment to influence you naturally you will see that you know your influence your area of influence will start shrinking but proactive people okay they don't allow the environment to influence them but rather they make an effort they take decisions they respond in a particular way that they are able to create a, a, an area of influence so that they can influence the environment not the other way around okay all right so this is your uh, this is the very first habit be proactive and take control of your own fate okay focus on the things that you can do not on the things that you cannot do that is what we call as proactiveness okay so first habit is be proactive and start taking control of your own fate okay for instance if you cannot get up let us say uh, if you cannot uh, concentrate on your studies okay rather than just uh, let us see stressing yourself out and blaming yourself i'm a kind of a i'm a lazy person i'm not able to concentrate on my studies start being proactive in which you try to find out a solution you know where you try to find out ways in which you can start studying okay that is what we mean by proactive you know you respond you reflect before you respond simply do not respond okay so that is the first habit of highly effective teams the second habit okay is begin with the end in mind before whenever you perform an action okay you're actually performing it twice whenever you perform an action you perform it twice why because first you perform it in your mind and then you perform it in let us say in reality so when you imagine it you know that is the first action that you perform and then when you physically do it it is then that you do it for a second time okay for instance here i've given you an example for instance if you build a house okay what you will do you will first visualize what kind of a house you would want to make first you would visualize in your mind what kind of a house do i want to have how many rooms okay do i want, want to have what kind of rooms okay how many kind of how many living rooms or how many let us say uh, how many uh, let us say whether i want a porch or a swimming pool you would first visualize it okay and after visualizing it 
then you would physically uh, you know let us say start constructing the house okay so therefore the second habit is always begin with the end in mind okay so whether you are at home okay at work take the time required for visualization okay so therefore if you are at home or if you are at work you know take time for instance now you are a student take time and visualize yourself what kind of a student i want to be let us say after my studies in the college what type of career i would want to have okay what type of let us say work uh, work uh, uh, let us say area i would want to uh, i would want to go into whether i would want to go into business whether i would want to go into administration or whether i would want to go into uh, let us say even politics or any kind of an area you know visualize yourself my dear students okay and when you have visualize okay then you start acting on it if you remember in the first semester we had talked about goal setting okay this is the type of goal setting so goal setting is very important and this is the second habit you know begin with the end in mind okay do not simply let's say study now without any end without any goal in your life okay because that will make your life directionless and meaningless okay so therefore you no know, begin with the end in mind all right it's very very important okay and therefore a very important goal even if you have a goal in your life okay it's very important that you have an ultimate goal what is that ultimate goal okay so right it's like a personal mission you know statement in your life okay so what's a personal mission statement or what is that ultimate goal that we want uh, that i'm talking about right now it's like this for instance here it's uh, as given an example in which imagine yourself let us say i know it's it's a very odd example but i'm just uh, you know giving uh, giving this example so that you understand just imagine after 3 years suppose if you die in your funeral okay if you passed away after 3 years sadly enough you've passed away take a moment to visualize your own funeral okay imagine your parents imagine your teachers imagine your friends what would they say about you as a person as a son or as a daughter or as a friend okay or as a student what would they say about you okay so ask yourself what would you like them to say in your funeral okay so what sort of person do you want to be remembered as or for what do you want to be remembered okay because in this world we have we need to understand the difference being you know uh, the difference between efficient and being effective okay being efficient and being effective efficient means it's like you are very efficient you are doing your work well okay it's like you are climbing like there is a ladder okay there is a ladder and there is a wall okay and this ladder let us say but you realize at the end when you are climbing the wall you know it's a wrong wall it's a wrong wall but being effective is you know your ladder is in the right wall okay right wall okay so what do you mean when we say being deaf i would stress on this you know when if you have an end in your in your life if you have a goal in your life you know make sure that that goal helps you to become an effective person all right in which let us say when you die you know when you die let us say when you die when you you uh, when when uh, i'm not saying when you die uh, i know of course every one of us we we know that we will have to die at some uh, point of our lives okay so so that when 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 the end comes uh, you know in your life okay you can become a really effective person in which you know the goal that you have be it in your career be it in every kind of goal that you have it should be linked to this ultimate goal which in which it should help you to be an effective person okay and who is an effective person who makes an impact not on who, or on just on himself but especially on the life of others okay i'll just give you an example 
let us say you want to be a rich person that is your goal in life but is your wealth going to impact only you or also going to impact the life of others is your wealth going to change also the life of others in a better way okay if it does then yes you have become an effective person let us say some of you will say oh i want to become an ias officer okay it's a very nice it's a very let us say noble goal all right but let us say just ask yourself if i become an ias officer will i become just an efficient or an effective ias officer will me becoming an ias officer impact the life of others in a positive way if it does then yes i have become an effect effective person if not then i have just become an efficient is okay so in any area of your life make sure that if you have a goal that goal should be linked to your ultimate goal in which it should make you an effective person and who is an effective person who impact the life of others in a positive way okay so be it any career that you choose make sure my dear students okay or any area of life make sure that you are making a positive impact on the life of others as a student i'm making an, a positive impact on my teachers as a student i'm making a as uh, as 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 youngster i'm making a positive impact on the life of my friends as let us say a brother i'm making a positive impact on the life of my brothers and sisters okay so you can you know expand this example into different areas of your life you know so ultimately make sure ask yourself always what sort of a person do you want to be remembered for when you leave this world okay that is a very important question that you need to ask okay and so we go on to the next habits that is the third habit and the third habit is this put things first so what do we mean please remember this simple maxim first things first so when i say first things first please remember you know to prioritize you know the things in your life prioritize the things in your life okay so how do you prioritize the things in your life when you you know uh, for instance now we do so many things but just ask yourself are those things making a positive impact in my life are those things let us say making a positive effect on my, on my life if i'm spending let us say every day one hour on facebook okay so just imagine one hour every day into 365 days in a year okay how many hours that is roughly i'm spending 365 hours Okay, let us say in here I'm I'm spending about three sixty five hours on Facebook. Just imagine if you would spend three sixty five hours reading a book. You can imagine the kind of impact you would be making in this world. Okay, so what I'm just trying to say is focused. on the things that make a positive impact in your life okay so just ask yourself the time that you are spending let us say communicating with your friends i'm not saying that you should not spend time uh, you know you should not spend time uh, with your friends you should you know it's very important but make sure ask yourself this question is that time that i'm spending with my friends having any benefits at all in my life is it building me up is it edifying me or uh, even the time that i spend with my friends is it edifying that person is it helping that person okay to become a better person in his or or her life okay so ask yourself therefore okay and always take care of the first you know that is the first things that are very very important in your life there is a book also which is which is about 1% you know it's it's called as 1% okay
So this book, which is on one uh, percent, it says that you know very often what happens with us is we concentrate on so many things, okay, on let us say ninety nine percent, which is useless, but we forget this one percent, which is very very important. And actually, it is this one percent that will produce results, better results in your life, better results in your life, okay. So therefore, the third habit is put first things first. Okay, and the fourth habit is think win-win. Now, in this type of habit, very often most people they think on a win-lose. Okay, I make friends with someone. Why? Because I want to benefit from that person. Okay, I make a relationship with someone. Why? Because I want to make a benefit from that person. It's like I win and the other person loses. And this kind of an attitude will not help us to really be. Truly successful in our lives. Why? Because the major advantage, disadvantage of win lose mentality is that when two people of this mentality come up against each other, the situation usually becomes a lose lose one. Okay? Because when two people have this type of a mentality, you know there will be no trust. The atmosphere will always be an atmosphere of mistrust. Okay? So therefore, in the end, both. Will lose. Okay, so after bitter fight, both parties, what will ha happen is they'll end up losing. And who gets to eat the pie? The dog gets the entire pie. That means it is the others who will benefit from that relationship, not the two people who are engaged in that relationship. Okay, so therefore, it is also impossible for a long-term positive relationship to form between two people. Who are constantly in competition with one another. If you are competing against one another, a win-lose situation, it will not be possible to develop a healthy relationship. Okay, so therefore, what is the uh, let us say the, uh, the the answer to that? Therefore, instead of focusing on a win-lose, focus on a win-win situation in your relationships in your life. Okay, and therefore you will find you now that you will be when you focus on win-win, you will build up positive relationships in your life. Okay, and that kind of a relationship will strengthen their relationship rather than eroding their relationship. Okay, so a good exercise would be you know is just think of an important relationship that you have. Okay. And where you'd like to, and 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 tell yourself, you uh, know, uh, uh, and uh, just tell yourself that yes, I want to develop a win-win mentality in this relationship. Okay, and how do you do that? You put yourself in the shoes of the other party and write down what would you believe would constitute a win for that person. Okay, so ask yourself in this relationship with my friend or with with anyone, uh, you know what. So what are the things uh, that 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 can help that person, or what are the things that can benefit that that person in in this relationship? Okay, and therefore, when you do that, it will actually be like as you see here. You know, it will be like you are investing in what we call as an emotional bank account. It's like when you are investing. Uh, you know, in a win-win situation, when you are having a relationship with a win-win situation, it's like you open a bank account, which is an emotional account, emotional bank account, and in this bank account there will be plus always. You know, a lot of things will be deposited here. There will be less minus or withdrawals. There will be more of deposits here. Okay, so therefore. A relationship with another person is a, like a kind of an emotional bank account, okay, where you put your time, your effort, and goodwill into it, okay, and the balance of the account grows, reflecting the increasing trust between the two parties. So, if you have a win-win mentality, you will find that the relationship that you have with people will grow, and it's like that emotional bank account that you have opened. Will grow and that will help you to become a truly successful person in your life. Okay, so how can you grow in your balance? How can you make that emotional bank account grow in its balance, grow in its deficit? First is sticking. You no, know, one example is like for instance, sticking to promises you've made. If you've committed to help your friend, make sure 
you uphold your commitment. Okay, nobody likes people who are only big in words but small in action. Okay, so therefore, stick to your promises and also, you know, listen emphatically to the other person. You know, always have a listening ear to people in the relationship. Why? If you have that kind of a, of a listening uh, uh, ear or let us say you, you it shows that you are concerned about the, that person. Okay, whereas a withdrawal from that emotional bank account can be if you have in that relationship, you are developing a win-lose situation, a win-lose mentality that will lead to uh, withdrawal in that emotional a withdrawal from that emotional bank account. OK, so therefore focus on a win-win mentality. The fifth habit is seek first to understand, then to be understood. It means, you know, Imagine you are walking into, uh, for instance, I've given this example. Imagine you are walking into a doctor's office and having the doctor listened absentmindedly to a few first few seconds. That means you are telling the doctor that I'm suffering from, let us say, stomach ache. I've eaten this, I've eaten that. And the doctor is listening, but you know, he is actually not listening to you. And let us say he stops you and says, okay, I've had you enough and he hands you a pres prescription. Okay. Or you go to an optician, you gave, uh, who will give, you gave your, who gave you his own glasses without bothering to check your eyesight. He is giving his own glasses to you without checking your eyesight. Would you trust such a doctor? Would you trust such an optician? No. Why? Because all they are concerned is about themselves. They are not concerned about you. Okay. So therefore, the fifth habit is, you know, be concerned about the other person. Seek first to understand the other person rather than seeking now rather than you know just asking them to understand me first okay put them first in your life okay so uh, therefore according to the experts in communication they say that you know words just make up 10 percent you know of what we say while sounds make up 30 percent of what we of that communication actually a body language makes up 60 percent body language makes up 60 percent in your conversations you know that is why they say words uh, you know actually words are uh, you know it's okay if words are not there why because even in that conversation if you have with someone if you would just concentrate on your on their body language you know you would find many things actually uh, that they would want I, I i what i would say is like many things would be spoken of not just with words, but just from the body language that that person is communicating. OK, so therefore I would encourage you, my dear students, to be, you know, so therefore, as it says here, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. OK, or what? Therefore, I would encourage you to be M -M, to develop, you know, empathy, empathy in your relationship. OK, try to develop this in your life and you will find that yes then you'll be able to develop successful relationships okay and you can become a successful person in your life all right and the sixth habit is synergize by treating others with openness and respect okay and what is syn uh, synergy mean synergy means a situation where the contributions of many add up to a total that exceeds the combined contribution of the individuals. It's like you have different forces. In public administration, there's a theory called systems theory. Okay, and it says that when different forces in that system, when they act, okay, when they act, let us say move all these forces, when they move in the same direction, okay, then the results that you would get from that would be tremendous. You know, the result would be a really, let us say, a, a very big result. Okay, so that is basically synergy. So try to develop, or what, in other ways, what we would say as teamwork. Okay, for instance, each of us sees the world differently, and we each have our own particular strengths. So we can actually leverage the power of differences that we have. Okay, by valuing 
valuing those differences. For instance, in our college, we have people coming from different races, from different regions, from uh, different ethnic groups. Instead of looking at those uh, differences in a very negative way, let's look at those differences in a positive way where we can learn. Okay, we can learn from the other person. Okay. And when we learn from the differences of uh, the other person, there are so many things, so many positive things that we can actually also learn them in, uh, put them into practice in our lives. Okay, so that is, you know, synergizing. All right. Okay, valuing the differences. Okay, and actually uh, knowing that those differences will actually make a contribution. Okay, in our goal. Okay, so make a list of people you find it difficult to discuss things with and think about their views. If you were more confident and open-minded, do you think you could find synergies between your perspective and theirs? Find out, let us say, in your friend's circle, some of your friends, maybe they have different point of view on a particular issue. Just discuss with them and be open. Develop openness, okay, and respect, okay? And you will find that actually, you know, the result that would come out from such a discussion with if you if you are entering that discussion with openness and respect, you will find that the result would be really tremendous. OK, and the last habit that we uh, would uh, find is, you know, sharpen the saw if you want to keep sawing. OK, for instance, if lumberjacks, you know, those are cutting down trees, they spend all their life cutting down trees without sharpening the saw. Just imagine you know, uh, they will not be able later to fell even a single tree. Okay, that's why sharpening your saw is essential for lasting effectiveness. Okay, and there are three, four important areas, sorry, there are four important areas in which you should sharpen your saw. One is the physical, in the first is phys physically, where you need to exercise, eat healthy, uh, and avoid undue stress. Okay. I would uh, request especially students to kindly make sure that you get a good amount of sleep because especially now with all this PUBG and uh, SUBG and all, it's very, very difficult. You know, uh, I find some students, they are unduly stressing themselves out, not getting the required amount of rest that require and therefore it is really hampering them and their effectiveness. Okay, so stay. So first area that you sharp, should sharpen your show, saw is, you know, in the physical part where you need to exercise yourself, eat uh, healthily and avoid undue stress. The second part is your spiritual aspect. It's very important also that you look into this aspect and make sure that this aspect also, for instance, meditation can be one as uh, meditation can really help you to improve your spiritual health. All right. And those who, 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 whose uh, spiritual health uh, uh, is, let us say, very good, uh, you will find that even if they have stresses and all, uh, you know, they will not, let us say, go up uh, even to the extent of committing suicide. They will have problems, yes. But if their spiritual health is very good, you know, they'll be able to deal with those problems in their lives. OK, so make sure, OK, that you have, uh, you know, you uh, you make sure you look into this area of your spiritual health also. And another part is mentally look into your mental health also. One way of looking into that way is where you read plenty of good books. Okay, books which let us say build you, uh, they motivate you. Okay, and spend much and uh, avoid spending too much time. Let us say even on your mobile phones, even on your TV screen. Okay, uh, avoid binge uh, television. Okay, where we especially watch those series uh, from uh, uh, season one to season six. Okay, which in the end does not uh, let us say edify or build you in any way. Okay, so avoid things, uh, you know, which do not contribute in your life. Okay, organize and plan things accordingly. Okay, uh, also are, are ways in which when you organize and plan things, they are also, uh, you know, good exercise to keep your mind sharp and fresh. Okay, and another part is fourth dimension or fourth aspect is taking care of your social and emotional health by deliberately seeking to understand others building positive relationships uh, relationships with them and working on projects that help improve their lives okay that means taking care of your social aspect also in this regard i would request especially my your, uh, dear students okay uh, make sure that you uh, when you are with your family members with, with, with when with you, you are with your friends can you 
keep that mobile phone away. Okay, can you concentrate, live on the moment, enjoy the moment? Okay, because you realize that after, let us say, a few years, you, your parents will not be there with you. They are uh, old and let's say, uh, especially if your parents are very, very much into their 50s and 60s, uh, you will, uh, let us say, in a few years, they will not be there with us. So, therefore, spend the time now. Enjoy the time that you're spending with them now. Okay, so keep aside that mobile phone. Okay, and just concentrate on the con conversation that you are having with them. Enjoy the conversation, the moments that you are having with your parents, with your brothers and sisters, with your friends and family members. Okay, live in the moment, my dear students. Okay, so these are the four areas which you need to sharpen your saw. Okay, so to make sure you truly sharpen your saw, what you can do as an activity is write down activities that you think could contribute to your well-being in each of the four dimensions. Okay, for instance, I'll just give you an example. Maybe you can assign, let us say, five minutes every morning I will meditate and pray. Okay, that will be a very good exercise which will really help in your spiritual. Or let us say every day I would spend around 15 minutes reading a book. I'm not saying, you know, big, uh, take big goals, but small, small steps. Let's say 15 minutes or 10 minutes, I'll read a book every day. Okay. Uh, or let us say in your uh, social and emotional health, what you can, <coughs> you, you just uh, promise yourself, okay, I will spend, let us say, meaningful time with my parents at least 10 to 15 minutes every day. Just sit with them and uh, just be with them. Okay, so just uh, ask yourself, write down those activities that you can, that can contribute and make sure you work on them. And I believe you now your life after uh, your studies uh, or after a few years you will find that yes uh, your life will really be a life in which your character is built up and in which that true success which you desire in your life is re really you have achieved it okay so thank you for listening my dear students all the best and looking forward to meet you again in another class thank you